Yes, I miss to be in a beautiful place like that, uh, but my confused authorities, I cannot make it because they are also inaugurated and swear we believe a chief religious job in Russia today. Uh, so I miss uh, not just being in such a nice place, but also uh, mingling with you uh, during this conference. Um, allow me to recognize um, His Excellency Dr. Matthew Ochien Owili, the Deputy Governor Sumu, and thank you for joining us uh, during this auspicious um, conference of the High Court. I also recognize our Director General, Dr. Smokin Wajana, um, of the Kenya Judiciary Academy, uh, our principal judge, uh, Justice Ellen Kogora, um, um, my brother Justice Professor Joel Boke, uh, who is the chairperson of the National Steering Committee of AJS, my brother and sister judges, the registrar of the High Court, the deputy registrar and the staff, Abjaboni. I am most delighted to address you today as you can be for the annual High Court Leaders Conference. This gathering serves as a pivotal moment uh, for you judges, you are the registrars of the court to reflect on our collective efforts, to reflect on how we can continue sharing innovative ideas and strategies on enhancing the institutional efficacy of the High Court. We all know and we need not to be reminded that indeed the High Court is the engine of the judiciary because of the enormous responsibility that has been placed on the High Court with unlimited jurisdiction and also the of the courts. The opportunity of my colleague, Brother Jadi, for your handwork and hard work. It is true. <laughs> That the high court in double case is all 95%. Effectively, okay, 10,105 that were filed in the first half of the financial year. Because these days we are data free. Uh, ourselves, what is the form in our docket on the and how we have our I must all Special recognition for the statistics that I have seen, Cameron is doing very. 
Kaliwa, Kakamega, Kericho, Kiangu, Mirimani Family Division, and Mombasa High Court. They are doing very well uh, in terms of the case clearance late. Uh, please join me in appreciating them for this outstanding achievement. Uh, your hard work has been instrumental in this achievement of commendable case clearance rates. As of December 2023, the high and thanks uh, Principal Jan uh, because you ran this exercise of uh, the cases the, 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 the cases basically which showed that the High Court had 69,514 pending cases. Out of those, 47,065 were categorized as case backlog because they had been in our system for longer than a year. I also commend the reduction in adjournment rates, uh, which at the time stood at uh, 7% um, the previous financial year. And now it has come down to 5% in the first half of this financial year, making a significant progress in the court's efforts to streamline case management. It means the cases that are ready for hearing are proceeding um, to a high percent of 95 percent and to me that is something to mention and thank you for. I wish to print that the Office of the Chief Justice is always committed to supporting the High Court to attain excellence in service delivery because we are in this together. It is due to this we have engaged the Judicial Service Commission and other arms of government to secure budgetary support to enable us to recruit more judges so that we can achieve optimal staffing levels. For now, I really wish to thank you for doing your very best, despite the old numbers, to ensure that the wheels of justice are always kept moving. My brother and sister judges, the timing of this conference is critical, coming shortly after the launch of our institutional strategic blueprint the social transformation through access to justice, which we call STAGE, which we did last November. The STAGE blueprint outlines our vision for a people-centered justice system that is accessible, efficient, and responsive to the justice needs and aspirations and capabilities of Kenyans. I fully associate myself with the theme of this year's conference, the role of the High Court in expanding the frontiers of justice. This is an opportune time and absolutely timely, and is also in sync with the aspirations of Stange. The role, the topic you have chosen, the theme of the conference, also challenges us to consider how the High Court can be a catalyst for broadening the scope of justice. Because when we were interrogating what is going to go into our blueprint, it was very clear from all the interactions that justice is a common good. It belongs to all of us. Justice and fairness cuts across. Everybody wants to experience justice and everybody assumes the agency of justice. 
they have a role to play to make sure that they experience uh, justice. Alongside, when we were addressing the justice needs and the gaps, which were clearly highlighted by a study that was done in 2017, known as the Justice Needs Survey. That Justice Needs Survey revealed that only 10% of Kenyans approached the former courts for dispute resolution, while 71% of the Kenyans go for alternative dispute resolution. And during this conference, you will see various forms of uh, danger years, uh, I mean, alternative dispute resolution methods that uh, Kenyans engage in, so I need not go into that. But what was most revealing was that 19% do not seek any redress for their grievances. They have been violated and they die without grievance because they have nowhere to go or they don't know where to go or they have no uh, no money or resources uh, to help them uh, decide how to seek legal redress. So this underscores the need for courts to be aware of the kind of justice we are dispensing and the number of people we are leaving out and to play a more active role in bridging this justice gap. It is up to us to see to it that people can access justice. And this is what you are going to do in the next three days. I also wish to point out that the High Court with its extensive jurisdiction and impending presence in all the 47 counties is uniquely positioned to be at the forefront of our quest to make justice more accessible to all our citizens. And to achieve this, we must embrace a broader interpretation of our judicial law as outlined in the Constitution beyond being just a mere arbiter of disputes that are brought to us. We now work with the court users committees and we need to find out what is happening in their communities where they are coming from. Are there disputes that are unresolved? And how can we assist them even resolve many of these disputes which come to us that just require people to be empowered to know how to talk to each other and to resolve with one another. We must strive to be the facilitators of dialogue. We have said it in the blueprint that we need to be connectors of various justice delivery channels and promoters of social harmony. We just went through as the Supreme Court last week through the uh, topics that you are going to discuss and we found the most enriching, especially when we interrogated these other channels and realized that uh, when people discuss these problems and find their own solutions, they become lasting solutions as opposed to when they come to court. I therefore urge you to actively champion the multi-door approach to dispute resolutions. In this regard, I urge you to encourage the uptake and use of mediation, alternative justice systems, and specialized courts through which we aim to make our justice system more responsive to the needs of Kenyans, particularly the vulnerable. I also wish to commend the exceptional efforts of our presiding judges in the various courts for championing a court infrastructure development across the country. 
You are collaborative with diverse, with local leaders, have not only secured land allocations to the judiciary, but also seen court facility constructions initiated through localized efforts, a boarding, a shared leadership model that is really commendable. I urge you to continue with these efforts as it will help us bridge the huge infrastructural deficits that we are facing in our quest to have more magistrate courts in all the constituencies and a high court presence in all the counties. We have also made a significant leap forward with regards to leveraging on technology as an enabler for efficiency of our operations. Our e-filing initiative has progressed significantly. We have rolled out across all the court stations the e-filing which we did on the March 11. And I urge you, brother and sister judges, to embrace and leverage on these technological investments because they only bring efficiency to our court uh, processes. We are also embracing technology to ensure accurate and prompt transcription of court proceedings. With the establishment of a pilot transcription center, we are set to offer transcription services across the country, aiming to alleviate the workload on our judges and judicial officers and to expedite the hearing process. To further enhance our operational efficiency and transparency, we have introduced a data tracking dashboard. This innovative tool we enable the judiciary's leadership and the court leaders to monitor court activities and outputs in real time, providing immediate insights and trend analysis into the performance of our courts and facilitating informed decision making. In addition, we have enhanced the capabilities of our case tracking system, the CTS. It is important for us to appreciate that we have been facing a big challenge with respect to data integrity for some time now. And this is the reason why uh, my Lord, the principal judge, ordered the physical count of all the files in all the high courts uh, so that we could get the correct data inputted in the CTS. To ensure that the data from the CTS is reliable, I have also undertaken an enhancement of the case tracking system. And I believe these enhancements are pivotal in ensuring the reliability of our data, which is indispensable for informed policy making and tracking the progress of our institutional development efforts. I urge you and all of us to embrace these technological advancements and operational strategies, uh, which is all about really enhancing efficiency, but also about transforming the way we administer justice. Because reliable data and the streamlined processes are the bedrock of effective court management. As we integrate these innovations into our daily operations, we are not just evolving technologically, but are also fortifying the foundations of our judicial system for the betterment of our society. And to conclude, I urge us all to continue championing the multi-door approach to the delivery of justice and embrace these technological advancements in order to expand the frontiers of justice. Let us continue striving for excellence 
in our service delivery. And with those remarks, it is my, now my honor and privilege to officially declare the 2024 High Court Rinders Conference officially opened and wish you wonderful, restful time at that beautiful lakeside uh, facility and the regret that I am not going to be with you but wish you all the best. God bless you uh, during this conference, during this Easter recess and always you and your families. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chief Justice. You've just received a very warm round of applause. You may not hear it, uh, but I can assure you that it is warm. Uh, and thank you for uh, your messages uh, uh, that are contained in your speech, um, reiterating the significant and consequential place and role of the High Court uh, pointing out to the data in the Justice Needs Survey and the need for the judiciary to align with the findings of, of that study, um, which includes the multi-door approach to dispute resolution, which is very central uh, in your blueprint at the start, as well as pointing us to the revolutionary advances in technology in the judiciary. And I don't use those words lightly, they are indeed revolutionary, uh, indeed. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chief Justice. You are free to continue.